Hey, my name is Stuart Runyon. I work in town for a company called Zesty.io. Um, today I want to talk about um, dealing with values by preference because I feel this is like the thing that like bites me every time. And like I know it and every time I forget it. Um, AKA cloning, AKA just saw this today, the clone wars. Um, so I constantly forget that in JavaScript values are passed by reference. Um, this has caused me many pains when dealing with state mutations. Um, one of my latest issues with this was in moment.js. So looking at this code, right, I set up moment, I get a, a moment, you know, piece of time. Um, if, you were to, if you were to log this out, format, you'd get this date. Um, then if you use the UTC modifier and it did format, you'd get the UTC date or format of that time. Then if you were to format it again, same time, it would still be in UTC? What? This makes, what? Like this was like mind melting, right? Oh boy. I'm blowing it. Uh, so, read the docs. I mean, really read the docs. Sets a flag on the original moment to internally use blah, blah, blah. Right, so it, it mutated that object. Right, so when I called that format method again, it had already changed the state of that object. So how can we avoid this specific issue? Um, this is the worst. Uh, so same setup, moment, time, I log it, time format, this is my date stamp. But this time, instead of just using UTC, I'll first I'll use clone which will give me a new uh, version of that object, then UTC, right? Now I'm no longer mutating the state of that time variable, right, the reference to that object. So then later, when I call time format, it is once again the same as before, right? Cool, great, but how do I do this outside of moment? Um, so check your preferred libraries. Uh, they usually have clone functions built in. Um, for example, jQuery clone, <coughs> underscore clone. Um, otherwise, I would recommend Lodash clone. Yeah, Lodash clone. Lodash is good because it's like framework ag agnostic. So if you already have a framework in place, um, you're not using jQuery, right? But you still need to clone objects. It's great. You can just include that one, require that one um, module. Um, not all copying cloning is equal. Right, so in this example, what I'm setting up is I have an object. This is like, this is like a complex data structure. Um, so I have this object me. It has a property of name, right? And then I have a property of movies, and that movies is a list of objects, okay? So I got Star Wars, it's my favorite, it's a true story. Uh, title, uh, so Mad Max, Monty Python. So if I go down here and I say, let mini me object assign object. So there's my source, me, to this target object. This is a shallow copy. It's what assign does. Uh, then if I go mini me's name is going to be mini Stewart, and then mini me's movies at the index of zero, its fave is going to be false, right? So now if I log me, right, from Stewart, uh, my first movie here, Star Wars, my fave is false. What? That's not true at all. Um, and if I log mini me, my name's Mini Me. Wait, hold up. What's happening here? Mini Me's name is Mini Stewart. That's correct. I did that. But why did um, setting that index of zero, the fave to, to false, affect both of these? Right? It's because, once again, with complex um, data structure like that, it's still a reference to that object. So that's the difference between a, um, a shallow copy and a deep clone. So. How do you solve that? Oh boy. Uh, deep cloning, that's how you solve that. Uh, a few things to consider. Uh, when dealing with state, think about where it came from and if it's a reference. Um, even when cloning, understand your data structure and if it needs a deep clone. When possible, prefer um, even mutable data structures. This is something you have to enforce in your code. Um, it's something that's not inherent. JavaScript is not inherent, inherently immutable. Uh, if you're interested in more, um, great topics to look into is cloning um, and shallow copying. 
uh, deep cloning and immutable data structures. So your friend, clone. Questions? Yes. Yes, I am. Yeah, totally, totally. And, and, and immutability is uh, an interesting thing too. Like, I feel like you kind of have both. Like, I definitely have scenarios where I get immutable structures, and like I'm like a greenfield project. I'm like, sweet, totally immutable. But I also get like legacy code bases where I just have like objects being thrown around, and then I have to mutate those. So this is why like, I kind of guard against some of that stuff when I don't want to change values by reference. All right, thank you. All righty. Get my ending notes here. Um, so that's it. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of go through, and if anybody's new and wants to introduce themselves, we'll let you do that. Um, then we'll go over um, who's looking for work, who's hiring, um, and then we'll, we're still planning on meeting up at the bar afterwards. Yep, we'll be meeting up at the bar after work to hang out and chat. Um, so first things first, uh, is anybody new? Hey, go ahead and stand up, introduce yourself. Once again, we're going to do um, looking to hire and hiring afterwards. So if you are looking to hire, go ahead and wait for that part. Okay, cool. Uh, anybody else new? Welcome. Anyone else? Good evening, team. Uh, I do lots of bridge pads, Angular, Pat, the local time developer. All right, welcome. Uh, my name is Bob Bennett. Uh, I just moved out here with a Lightning Boot Camp in North Park. Worked there for about 10 years. So you're going to learn how to make a front end. Cool, awesome. Awesome, welcome. 